Good morning, everybody. We are looking at Tech 21's series called Character Plus, and this is one of those. This is the Mop Top Liverpool, and let me turn my guitar volume down. Um, this is a fantastic series of pedals. So there's four in the series. My goal today is just to play them. I love these basement lives um, because quite frankly, I just get to play a pedal and dive into it with a lot of attention. Something over the last few years with the show that's been really difficult. I do a lot of historical, big biographical stories a lot of times. And um, sometimes I don't get to play pedals as much as I used to. So this is this really fun thing where I am experiencing these in front of you. I played these uh, in the past a little bit. I tried them out, knew that I loved them. And then last night for like 35, 40 minutes, I played them again. But we're gonna go through them. So we have the Mop Top Liverpool. Now the Mop Top Liverpool is a Vox. Mop Top is a Beatles reference. This is a Vox type amp. And then you have a Boost, which is a Range Master. On this, this is, let's get it in focus here. Actually, let's do this, it's a little bit easier. This one, the Screaming Blonde is a Fender amplifier and you have with it a tube screamer so this might be the most absolutely most usable of all of them um i just got a notification on my computer and we don't want that so i'm gonna turn that off i'm gonna turn texting off too there we go look at that do what i want okay so tube screamer and fender so one thing to note i'll show you here the pedals all operate the same on and off. The effect, this is a boost. On this one, it's like the Tube Screamer. We'll get through that. And then you have channel A, B. And that is exactly what it seems like. They have a shared EQ and you have an A, B. You can set the drive differently. You can set the volumes differently. Really, really amazing. Um, and each amp, has a character knob. And while I'm going through the remaining two here, you know, we have Fender, right? Fender here, Vox here. The character is a control that is really genius. And it says, hey, this is a Vox amp, but we all know that Vox made a lot of amps. So the character knob lets you kind of swing through a variable selection of the vibe of the pedal. So if it's a Fender, right? We're talking about a, a Screaming Blonde is a blonde Fender amp. So if you Google blonde Fender, you'll see some combos. Um, I had one of these I used on the show for a while. It was a blonde Fender Bassman. So same thing, you have that character control. And you can, with the character, I tried it. It's very, very good. You can swing from like a Princeton to a deluxe to a basement. And you know, it's, it's, it's moving the EQ perfectly. Let's look at the next pedal. Then we have the English Muffy, which is a play on English muffins. If you didn't understand that, now you know. I like a good English muffin. I should have eaten breakfast today, but I didn't. This is a really cool one. It's a high watt. And it is a high watt plus a big muff. Now, I'm excited to play this one. The high watt is such a crazy cool amp. And um, yeah, we'll get into that. Then we have the final of the four, the fuzzy Brit, because British people never shave. Um, they always have a beard, always. I don't know, it's a great name. So fuzzy Brit is Marshall. So this is, think Plexi, Marshall, yeah, that's, that's what it felt like to me. Really fantastic. So if you're looking at something like My Charlie Brown, uh, Brian Wampter's Plextortion, this is in that same camp. A Zvex box of rock, same tonal camp. Circuits are nothing alike in any of those I mentioned. But here we have a fuzz that is a fuzz face, but with a really usable tone control, which I don't know that I've ever seen a fuzz face style tone with such a 
with a tone control period, but such a good tone control. Because uh, when you put a tone control into that, it's a little messy um, and historically not, not great. So jumping up to these questions, I see uh, uh, Kaber Wilson says, are these new? So this series, Character Plus, came out in 2022. But before that was a series just called the Character Series. So kind of started here. You might have seen these. So this is the Liverpool, which is going to be the Vox thing, right? So this is kind of the amplifier engine of this circuit. Um, and these started in 2008, and there were um, eight of them total, and they ran for like 10 years, and they're really great. I have a couple more. I'll show one more. It's the British. So yeah, you kind of you have this line that was around for a long time. And if you notice um, on these, there's a phrase here. It's really important. It's really important to pedal history. Sansamp. You might be familiar with a Sansamp. And if you're not, you need to be. I've showed it on the show um, a lot. The Sansamp is one of the most important and brilliant um, circuit designs in guitar history, in my opinion. Long before DSP, um, you know, cab sims, IRs, Kempers, long before any of this, the Strymon stuff, um, you know, Universal Audio, way, way, way before. Um, a really genius engineer, Andrew Barta, um, created the Sansamp. And the Sansamp is the the legacy product of Tech 21. So when we talk about Tech 21, you have to go, wow, this Sansamp is revolutionary. I mean, we saw Kurt Cobain using this thing back in the day, and it's, I still, 80% of gigs I see, like around town or players that I'm friends with, when I go to a bass rig, it's usually a bass Sansamp. They're just phenomenal. With that said, this is really special because we're gonna give this away, by the way, today. Um, we're gonna to give this exact one away. But when you look at this, you don't even have to use an amp. You just heard me playing through the Kemper. Um, I might actually plug it up here. I actually don't know if I have a mic cable free. I might plug it up for you, but it has an XLR out on it. So look at this. Come on, there we go. You can go straight into a board and it uses that analog Sansamp tech that Andrew created. So each of these units, you really have what you need to play a gig and it would fit kind of in your pocket. Wait, hold on. Look at this, look at this, hold on. Yo, what's up, man? I got a sick gig. I mean, come on. You can't do that with my pedals. You definitely can't do it with a Klon. So, yeah. That's where we are on this. So, 2008's when all this kind of started. The Character Series. Now we have the Character Plus Series, as we see right here. They're a really fascinating mix of tech. Andrew does whatever he needs to do to get these to work in a way that sounds great. So, ICs, transistors, FETs as analog as possible across the board. They're also not afraid to use digital, which is awesome. And these dropped in 2022. So that's kind of the overarching, you know, the overarching thing there. I'm looking at these comments. Um, Adam Knox says, how does this compare to the Quilter Super Block? More tonal options. I really like the Quilter Super Block. A lot, like as an amp, um, you know, it'll power a speaker cab. It, it it's in the same camp, but it's not. These um, do more. They won't power a cab, but if you're wanting a preamp effect, there's nothing like this on the market. So these are very very unique. Let's look at a couple more comments here. What's the voltage? They just run at normal nine volts. That's another crazy thing. Like they're just 
I'm running this literally off the 9 volt, 100 milliamp pedal power. Yeah. Uh, Rick, R I Q U E. Uh, these are analog. Yeah. Andrew is a master of analog. And like I said, they're not afraid to use digital, but it's really wild. These have existed decades before the now hip, trendy simulate an amp thing. And, and the sans amp is worthy of be, being looked at. Let's um, pop up this website here and just kind of peruse for a moment. Um, let's see. Let me pull it up, the browser. So on the website, you have, you know, go to their website, first of all. It's great. But that's kind of the line together, Character Plus series. Um, they talk about all of this. So 100% analog sans amp technology. This is the breakdown, really good demos. Yeah. So go, go check this out. Check out the website because you can also just go to, there's things like this fly rig. I think the fly rig is what inspired what we're seeing here. The idea with this was, hey, we're just going to make a literal guitar rig that you could go on a flight and then plug your guitar in and it works. And it's really brilliant. And then you have, obviously, this is what I kept harping about. The Sansamp stuff, like this right here, the Sansamp Classic, the GT2, the Para Driver, the Bass Driver. These are unprecedentedly amazing. So go check them out. And now I'm gonna play guitar more because that's what people want. People want people want guitar to be played. So I'm gonna close that off and demonstrate these. Today's drink of choice is Spindrift Lime Mint. It tastes like lime. I don't taste any mint, but it's good. All right, let's hook up the English Muffy. And remember, I'm gonna give away, here's a Sansamp generously provided a brand new in the box, Screaming Blonde. I'm gonna give this away soon. Um, so let's go to the English Muffy. Let's do that one. You like, I'm just going to let noises happen on the morning basements where you're going to hear amps being plugged up and stuff. It's going to be really great. There will be no shame of strange noises on the basement lives. Got to get that perfectly symmetrical. Hold on, hold on, that foot switch is off. Center. That looks pretty good. That looks real good there. All right, I'm gonna grab a mic cable. I really, what you don't know, because I have a wireless lapel on, is I'm across the room. And I have grabbed a mic cable because I do wanna try this. I wanna try this line in. So you've been hearing Kemper um, in a minute, I'll demo, I'll do the Screaming Blonde line in. So this is also the guitar of the day. It's a Reverend. Um, I can never remember the model, which makes me feel horrible, but gosh, I love this guitar. It's so great. You can stick your finger through it. It's amazing. I love this guitar. Um, so it has this really cool knob here, which to the human ear, it's like you go from single to humbuckers. It's really, really great. So let's look back down at the English Muffy. So, so right now I am in the Kemper and I have my typical, my MiG-50 that I profiled and I have delay and reverb on there. But here's the dry. <laughs> That is just a dry signal. So I'm gonna go through this and um, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna go between A and B and then I'm gonna play with this big muff here. So, are you ready? Hold on to your britches, as they would say in my home state of Alabama.
I have to chime in. The JTG has a comment. Do, do they have a cab sim built in? Can you record? Yes, that is what this right here is all about. There's an XLR here. This is an amazing, like if you're doing home recording, I'm sorry I derailed my own demo, but if you're home recording and you're on a budget, this is literally like having pick an amp, Marshall, Fender, High Watt, and Marsh. It, like it's incredible. Like you have two channels and a good effect, great cab sim. So yes, 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 yes. You can record and you should record. <laughs> So you notice as I go between drive, channel A, volume, high, mid, low, character, and drive A. And then when I go to B, volume, shared, you have the same EQ, it's shared, character B, drive B. So let me go to A. I'm going to leave A alone like I have it. Let's mess around with the B side, and I'm gonna play this character knob. And remember, the idea of the character is that, like, this is a high watt amp. So let's turn the knob and kinda of play around with the range of what high watt amps have been historically. So you're gonna notice a really broad set of tonal characteristic changes in this knob. Turn my verb back on because I feel naked without it. So this character could be perceived as, I don't know, you could think of it as so many different things. Um, headroom, but it's more than that. It's, it's like, it's, it's affecting the tonal palette of what the high watt is at the moment, right? So obviously as I was going up, it's like more juiced. It's like way like more pushed. It feels like maybe the volume is up really loud. Maybe the tubes are being really pushed. Maybe it's a lower wattage head being really kind of abused when it's way up. And as I go down, there's amazing clean tones in here. So mess with this EQ. Skip a little mids out. Watch this. Bypass just to be playing a MiG-50, which is basically a plexi. Back on. I mean, that's amazing. I love the sound of this MiG-50. It's a little low, probably. Turn it up a bit. That's such a beautiful clean sound. Put that delay back on. Listen to this. Turn it off just the just the MiG-50. I mean that's really great. 
I'll, this delay is a mix of a little bit of reverse and a little bit of quarter note. But listen to, like this is good, I love this tone. But I'm gonna turn this on and it's like, bam. And so I'll say this, this is not even an amp that I would recommend for cleans necessarily. When I see the English Muffy here, I think big muff, distortion, cranked high watt. So let's do that. You now saw that it can do really amazing clean. Let's go to, let's dirty it up a little bit. Let's go back. Let's go, uh, well, let's stay on the B and, and dirty it up. Let's turn the amp character off. And I have my MiG-50 right here, profiled in the Kemper. And I'm gonna turn on the big muff circuit. One of the greatest circuits ever made. Let's do the kind of Santana dark neck pickup thing with the muff. Roll the tone back. So this is a fantastic pedal. If you like high gain, but you want clean gain as well, you also want to fuzz, this is amazing. So let's turn on, I made, a, I made my drive B, channel B, a clean tone. And then I made A dirty. <laughs> Off. So I have three tones here. My amp or DIN if you were doing that. Channel B. And then channel A, or you can do it however you want. That's a little backwards. So that's a super, super cool unit. Um, let's uh, let's move to the fuzzy Brit. Let me look some comments here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do the Fender one, the Screaming Blonde. I'll go DIN. I have an extra channel I can do that with. I'll unplug my drum machine and go straight in. So, yeah, direct XLR out sound. Everybody's wanting that. I can tell you already it's really good. But let's give you what you want, what you really, really want. I want it. I want it. That's the Spice Girls. If you didn't know that, we'll save that for record time. Let's do the Fuzzy Brit. This is a Marshall. And 
it is a fuzz face. So let's see what we can get out of this. I'm excited. Are you excited? Let's be excited. Again, we're going to do all the awkward noises that most demo people won't do. You know, there's not everything's clean cut in life. And I just want to show you what it's really like to do YouTube. There's noises when you unplug cables. Nobody's going to tell you that. They're going to lie to you. But you're better than that. Okay? All right. So the Fuzzy Brit is Think Marshall JTM45 and Think Two Channels and then Think Fuzzface. All right. Let's do this. You ready? You buckled up? Pull your britches up or whatever I said earlier. Here we go. So that's my bypass tone. I'm going to make channel A a cleanish tone and then depend on, I'm going to make the B a distorted tone. So think cleanish old Marshall. I'll do a Hendrixy kind of cleany thing and then B, I'm going to just juice it and just see like how, how pushed I can make it where it sounds good. So the key I'm finding immediately is that if you want a clean tone, get that character knob more to the left. Start there. I mean, immediately, it's like a more better thing, right? That's stupid good. Bypass? In a lot of ways, this could be like the ultimate Kemper helper or something. Not that I necessarily sit around needing help. I think it sounds great, but there's like this extra ability on the fly here with something like a Kemper is pretty explosive. Like you can have your Kemper profiles or whatever, and then you can have one of these character amps for two channels to shape and characterize that Kemper profile. It's kind of amazing. And you're putting analog in front of it, which is amazing. Just, just talking off the lid, but really cool. <laughs> That is neck pickup here on the Reverend, and I'm just floored off the bat how good that is. That is, I'm gonna turn the gain up, to, no, I'm gonna turn the character up because it'll do a little more grit. And listen to that. My favorite thing going on right now, there's a heated argument in the comments. Um, David Wallace says, cables with a mute button are for goobers because someone up there said, well, you can buy a cable with a mute button. So there's a debate in the comments. I need you to chime in. Are cables with mute buttons for goobers? Let's take a poll while I continue to demonstrate. And G Bomb says this is what Hendrix used to play the Star Spangled Banner. Yes, a lot of people don't realize that Andrew Barta time traveled and actually created this in um, January of '69, so that when Hendrix played Hendrix played at Woodstock, uh, mm. Hendrix had this on the stage. Kind of amazing. Um, not only is Andrew a circuit designer, he is a time traveling um, circuit god. It's amazing. Let's do channel B. Well, 
Well, that was easy. Um, that's a plexi sound being turned up really hot. There's a really cool dynamic here. The character is not a gain knob, but it is definitely a gain knob. It's doing way more. It's, it's changing the, the, the frequency spectrum. It's changing the nature or character. That's why they call it that, of the pedal. This drive control is a true drive control, meaning it is, cre it is there for one purpose, to raise the gain level of the circuit. This is doing multiple things here. But there's something magic about cranking this and turning the drive down that's really cool. So I'm just switching between A clean and B dirty. It's amazing. So here is A clean. Here's your dirty. That is such a great cranked plexi sound. I am not afraid to tell you that that is as great as my Charlie Brown, as great as one of Wampler's. I mean, it's a fantastic amp in a box, Marshall. And people are always digging around for these and arguing over which one's the best. I've never heard Andrew's Marshall thing brought up in these amps in a box. And it's like such a shame. So this is amazing, fuzz face. <laughs> So I'm, I'm on that dirty channel, so pushed like Hendrix. And let's hit the fuzz. It cleans up. I wouldn't say it cleans up like a germanium or something, but it's cleaning up really well. And trust me, no one in your audience will know. Yeah, William, William De Silva says that sounds so convincing. Yeah, you're not wrong. Amazing. All right, next. Next up. Oh, I've already done three. Did I do? Yeah, I did the Vox. Oh, I opened with the Vox. Okay, yeah. 
I get, I get confused sometimes. I'm human. Uh, let's jump to the giveaway. Let's give one of these away right here. The first person in the comments to name the designer of the Tube Screamer, his name of the Tube Screamer wins this. Joshua will find you. I interviewed him this last year. I have some footage we're working on with that. Really exciting. We're going to give you this. We're going to mail it to you Monday, Tuesday. It comes with all the European stuff if you have different plugs. Uh, Screaming Blonde, big thanks to Tech21. Um, as always, I don't take money to do this stuff. I'm not a demo guy. I love pedals. I love pedal history. I love circuits and I love designers. So for me, this is just showing Andrew's really great work that I feel is criminally overlooked. And Tech21, they sent me these. And um, I've had them for a while. I have a huge collection of Tech21, and I want to do a Who is Tech21. If you want to see that, drop it in the comments if you would like to see kind of me demoing my favorite units, like the Double Drive, um, just all these pedals that I really love they've made over their career, the Sans Amp, and then maybe spliced in with a Zoom interview. If you want to see that, drop in the comments. But thanks to Tech21 for providing this giveaway unit. Uh, the first person to drop that name in there, um, I already see some correct answers. I'll let Josh deal with that. Let's go to the next unit. It is the Screaming Blonde that we just are giving away or have given away. Um, uh, someone said Sandra Bullock. I'm unaware of that. That's that deleted scene from the net. All right. We're going to get crazy here. I'm going to unplug my input on my universal audio drum on the drum machine uh, into the universal audio. And we're going to, we're going to go back and forth between Kemper and XLR. And honestly, we might rip the space time continuum. I'm not really sure. So I'm going to unplug the drum machine here. Very exciting stuff. Very exciting. This is called an XLR cable. Um, if you've never seen one of these, you can buy them. They're available. So I'm plugging it into the, Kemp, uh, the UA Channel 4. Just like my, this is the input my drum machine was on. So it's dry, dry as a whistle. I don't know what that's saying. That's also an Alabama saying. So dry as a whistle. And I'm going to plug it in here to the side like this. So this is amazing if you're home recording or you want to carry this thing to your gig. This is, this is amazeballs. There you go. We'll do a little tilt here. No, I got to keep it straight. So we're, we're plugged in XLR, right? I'm going to mute that real quick and basically bear with me. I don't have a setup to do this like quickly. It is pretty quick. I'll just turn the Kemper knob down on my preamp and then I'll turn the XLR up. So let's do that right now. I'll go between the Kemper clean and just straight out of the blonde with all of it off clean. So you'll be hearing this. Here's the Kemper. Let me kill the verb to be fair. So dry and dry. Here we go. Jimmy, you won. Read that note up there. Congrats. Yeah, aren't whistles wet? I, I think they are. I'm reading that in the comment too. All right, here's the, this is the Kemper. All right, I'm going to turn that down. Let's see here. I have to unplug it. That's how this works. Okay, I got you. So I'm going to unplug. Ah, let's see here. All right, and this is the Tech 21. I mean, let's do this again. Let's do this again. This is bridge pickup. All right, 
right, let me plug the Kemper back up. Just the mic input here. Unplug the Screaming Blonde for posterity. It's... I accidentally applied 48 volts to my lapel. We'll see what happens with that later. That was what just happened. The I was just sitting there in a mild panic staring at my interface and you got to see that. That's nice. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put a mute on my Kemper. This is what the world needs. All right. This is the Tech 21. All right, now that's a really great clean tone. No frills. Here's the bypass. Let's set up the Fender sound clean on A, and then I'll go to B and make it dirty. So let's do that first. Yeah, immediately like it's just a great sound I honestly don't even want to mess with that as a clean sound just a reminder I'm going straight out of this I am NOT using a Kemper this is directly out I'll show you directly out and into the interface okay Kemper is big no-no right now. No Kemper. So you're hearing what you wanted to hear. I saw several comments. These are cool pedals. Patrick Alberg. Let's switch over and make a dirty Fender sound. the tube screamer again these are just phenomenal like I don't really know what else to say I feel like I've said it 900 times here they are extremely phenomenal pedals um, I think a lot of you are realizing that even now Alpha, alpha numeric says I'm driving off a cliff. I don't know what that's about. But these are really, really good. I'm gonna jump back to the Kemper here just to add some effect. And let's do a little jam here with this particular unit and I'll go back and forth.
That's a great sound. I pulled the character up and the drive back, kind of like I did with the Marshall pedal. That's really nice. Tube Screamer here. Well, after years of doing this show, I finally got to talk about one of my favorite brands, Tech 21. Um, it's been a slow crawl for some reason, but I want to do that episode as well. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me kind of interview Andrew about his career and everything. Just a huge shout out to the crew there. They are amazing. Um, <clears throat> here's a photo. So that's Andrew there. And, um, they're just, that's Andrew there on the, on the, um, right. Sorry. My brain is not working. Um, yeah, just an incredible, incredible, uh, team. And, um, yeah, just killer designs, killer products. Um, huge thanks to, just everyone that helped me kind of, you know, get this together. And, um, yeah, got these pedals in our hands here. Um, yeah, we gave this away. Super, super exciting. Big thanks to Dell. Um, sorry, I didn't mention that, but that's, that's her on the left in the photo. Um, but, yeah, this has been really fun. I will do a quick record time because I can, you know, do whatever I want. I like the music. One more time. Mm. Nick really killed it on that one. Uh, Little Secret. I'll play it one more time. That's actually music he created for the Bonsai Little Stinger commercial that was before the show. And we just pulled it, or he pulled it and put it in here. But none of you knew that until now. Little Easter egg. It's actually older than the show. Um, Laurie Basilio. If you don't know Laurie, I highly advise you listen to this record and her other records and everything she's ever done and go on YouTube and watch her play 
stuff. It's amazing. It's incredible. Um, to my friend Josh and JHS with love. Sorry. She's awesome. Uh, the musicians on this record are stinking amazing. Sean Hurley on bass, um, Esther Na on keys, Leland Schuyler on bass, uh, Vinny, I can never say his last name, but he's amazing, and he's on drums. So Laurie plays electric, acoustic, and additional keys. Um, favorite track? I don't have one. They're all very good. Her guitar tones are stinking amazeballs on here. So check this record out, uh, stream it or whatever. But she has this thing with violet, the color violet. It's like it's like her go-to. So Laurie is one of the sweetest humans alive. Been really honored to have her use a morning glory on her board for literally years. And um, I may or may not have um, a prototype design for a signature pedal with her on her board. I don't know. Might have been there for a while now. I don't really know. I can't answer those questions. But check this record out. Um, Your love, Laurie Basilio. Um, we're done here. Let me see if there's any pressing questions. Take one or two minutes. Um, again, thanks everyone for tuning in here. Um, Gregory Mc McMahon, how do the frets feel on this guitar? Amazing. This guitar feels really good. It plays like the best Strat I ever owned, which I ended up selling in regret. It has that kind of neck profile. It's really great. Um, Madsen Amplification. You're awesome. You're here. Poison Noises is here. Love these guys. Um, Chad Jane. Reckon it would take pedals. Yeah, these, these Tech 21s, yes. You can put it at the end of your board if you want. Yes. Yes and yes. They take pedals very well. Um, yeah. Looks like just a lot of people realizing how good these are. And that is exactly what I wanted to do today. So my job is done. I will now, I will now walk away. There's a lot of talk about uh, driving off cliff and stuff and punching drywall. I don't know what's going on there, but you know, good to be here with you. Until next time, I might do one of these this weekend, just on the fly. I might do like, I have so many pedals to talk about. I'm pumped. I'll see you later. It's been a really good uh, time with you. Good, good program. Bye-bye.